Hey everyone, my name is Matt. This is my son, JR. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this rocking bassinet. I made this bassinet out of walnut, and some of the interesting design features of this are the side assemblies and the spindle assembly. The side assemblies are tapered down towards the rockers at about 10 and a half degrees, and in the center here where the mattress is, the spindles are actually tapered in towards the mattress at about six and a half degrees. All the joinery in this project is all angled moors and tendons or angled in the side assemblies and normal in the connecting rails. So let's get started. Earlier this year I found these walnut slabs listed on Craigslist. The tree that these came from was planted by the grandfather of the gentleman that I bought them from. He planted the tree in the late 1930s and this tree came down in the storm in 2008. They had the tree cut into lumber and the gentleman that I bought the slabs from used almost all of it for his own woodworking. He recently decided to get out of woodworking so he sold his entire shop and a few months later he decided to get rid of the last of the walnut to make space for other things. For this project I decided to use the narrowest and longest of the three because it had some really bad cracks that would prevent me from using it as a whole piece or getting large project parts out of it. Here's a look at some of the cracks. It was challenging but after spending some time laying out the parts it looked like I was going to get a pretty good yield. On this chunk I laid out for six pieces of square stock on the right, one more piece of square stock on the left, and a rocker on the bottom. I used my beam saw to make the rough cross cuts. Now looking at the end grain of the cut, we can see clearly why the slab was in such bad shape. The pith was left in the slab, causing cracks to emanate from it as the slab dried. I'll start processing this chunk into parts by first ripping it into two. I have that nice solid area on the left that I want to separate to process separately. That cracked half didn't have much holding it together, but luckily as I had thought, I'll still be able to get some parts out of these pieces, like here is a piece of square stock. Next I want to get the solid part ready to be resawed. I'll flatten one face at the jointer and square up an edge. Although not required for resawing, I ran the other face to the planer. I wanted to make sure I could see if there were any defects I wanted to avoid. This section turned out to be very nice, lots of clear grain and no cracks to deal with. It was pretty simple to resaw this in half, and here are those two resawed halves. Now I can rip my square stock out of the resawed halves. The finished dimension of the square stock is going to be an inch and a half square, and I'm rough cutting them to be somewhere around two inches square. Next I'll take a moment to refer back to my drawing to see which parts I still need. I'll head back to the slab and cut another chunk off. Again I'll spend some time looking it over trying to find the best way to cut this into project parts. I draw a guideline through the pith so I can split this in two, similarly to how I cut the first chunk. The cracked portion on the right looks like it will yield me another rocker. Same thing with the bigger piece again, I'll resaw it and then cut my stock out of it. The crack in this piece didn't end up being an issue since this chunk was longer than I needed for most of my parts. Now the easy part, I'll flatten and square up each project part on the jointer and then I can play them all to their necessary dimensions. As I normally do, I did this over two sessions allowing the parts to rest between millings.
I then spent some time laying out the parts for each side assembly. Now I can get started on the side assembly joinery. At my miter saw station, I'll cut the splay angle on the top of the two styles. At the table saw, I'll cut them to length using my crosscut sled and a stop lock. Next I'll cut the top rails to length making sure I have opposing angles at both ends. Now for some joinery. I'll be joining the rails to the styles with angled tenons and perpendicular mortises. I'll lay out the top mortises on one style and transfer the stop and start positions to the other three styles. I'm just going to be cutting the top mortise for now. And this is my quick sanity check to make sure I have those mortises laid out on the correct sides of the styles. I'll set the mortiser to cut these mortises. One way I found that makes it really easy to get this bit centered is to draw a center line on the work and plunge the bit until the point contacts the work, leaving a dimple. This will show you which way you need to adjust the fence. These mortises are going to be a half inch wide, 7 eighths of an inch long, and an inch and eighth deep. Now I can start cutting the tenons. I'll start laying out the tenons on the top rails. I measure over one inch from the end and make a mark. I use a bevel gauge set to the same angle that I cut the top of the styles to and scribe the angled shoulder. I use a square to carry the line across the other face, rotate the stock and continue carrying the line with the bevel gauge. Rotate once more and carry the line with the square. If everything is set right, the line should match up on the last corner. Back at the table saw, I use the miter gauge and the dado stack to remove the waste from the tenons. Here I'm using an offcut to set the height of the blade. Once I have the height set, I'll cut the tenons on my actual work pieces. I'll make one pass with the miter gauge angled in one direction, and for the second pass, I'll swing the miter gauge to roughly the same angle on the other side of 90 degrees. I'm not paying attention to what angle I set the miter gauge to, since I'm not cutting all the way to the shoulder line here. Back at the bench, I laid out the other two mortises on each style and cut those with a mortiser. Next, I'll clean up the tendons on the top rail with some chisels. I'll remove the majority of the waste first before coming back with a wide chisel and chopping right on the line. Next, I need to cut the angle into the tenon. I'll lay that out based on the mortise width and make some cut lines that are perpendicular to the tenon's shoulder. I'll cut along those lines with my dovetail saw. I'll make another cut to remove the waist and then clean up the shoulder with the chisel. Next I can start working on the middle rail. I cut one end to the splay angle and now I'll work on cutting the tenon into this end. Again I'll measure in and wrap the shoulder line all the way around the piece. I'll remove the bulk of the waist with the table saw and then chop back to the shoulder line at the bench. With that tenon cut, I can lay the rail in place and mark the other shoulder location and its length. And the same thing as for the top rail, I'll mark and cut out the angled tenon. With the middle rail fit, I'll move on to the rocker. This process is the same as the middle rail. I'll create the tenon on one end, rest the rocker between the styles, and mark the length and the shoulder locations and then I'll cut the other tenon. 
With the joinery cut, I'll work on the rockers. I started by making a template of the rocker. The radius of the rocker's curve is about 77 inches, so I set up a long trammel with my router to cut the arc. Now to get the other side of the rocker, I need to move the router the desired width of the rocker, which is an inch and a half, plus the width of the router bit I'm using, or quarter of an inch, so a total of an inch and three quarters. I'm moving the whole router and trammel assembly relative to the template stock. I'm not changing the radius for this cut. Once I have the router moved, I'll cut the other arc. Now I'll trace the shape onto the rocker and roughly cut it at the bandsaw. I'm going to flush the rocker to the template with the router, but first I have some defects that I want to fill. I'm using some epoxy with a bit of tint here. Now I can start flushing up the rocker. I'm only doing the inside curve right now, and I'll do the outside curve once the side is glued so I can flush up the rocker to the styles. Next I'll work on the panels in the side assemblies. I start by cutting 3 quarter inch wide grooves around the top section of the side assembly. The grooves in the top and middle run all the way through, and the grooves in the styles are stopped. I'll lay the side assembly on my panel stock to find an orientation that I like, and then trace the shape onto the panel stock. I'll then extend the lines so the panel will go into the grooves. And then I can cut it out at the bandsaw. Next I'll finesse the panel so it fits correctly. If the panels fit, I'll go ahead and apply a few coats of finish to pre-finish them before assembly. Next I'll start working on the rails which connect the two side assemblies together. The top rail needs to be a parallelogram to match the splay angle of the side assembly. I'll make one rip cut to establish the angle on one side and then adjust the fence to give a final width that matches the thickness of the side styles. And then I'll cut the top and bottom rails to length with the crosscut sled. And the last thing I'll do with the table saw is to cut the shoulders on all the rails. Now another sanity check to make sure the mattress will fit correctly before I cut the mortises for the lower connecting rails. That was good, so now I can lay out and cut the mortises. Notice on my layout that I've offset the mortise location top to bottom to avoid the groove for the panel. And just like the other mortises, I'll cut these as well with the mortiser. Then I can cut the tenon on the connecting rail to fit. I'm going to glue up the side assemblies first, and to make clamping really easy, I'm going to make some wedges that will allow me to clamp across the assembly. I made these wedges at the same angle as the style splay. 
Before the actual glue up, I'll glue these wedges to the styles, and when the glue dries, I'll glue up the side assembly. Using these wedges, I can put a clamp right across these joints. And when the assembly is dry, I can remove the wedges with a swift mallet hit. Since these blocks are made out of cedar, it is the cedar fibers that fail since they are weaker than both the glue and the walnut. Next I'll flush up the bottom of the rockers with a flush trim bit and my router. Now I'll cut the mortises for the upper connecting rail. I waited until now to cut this mortise since it will slightly intersect the mortise for the top rail. Doing it this way I mortised all the way through the top rail's tenon so I didn't have to worry about adjusting the two tenons to coexist in the same area. Now I can cut the tenon on the end of the top connecting rail. Like the other tenons, I'll remove the bulk of the weights on the table saw to get Swiss size to the mortise. Once I have it sized, I'll mark the length using the mortise as a reference and cut it to length with my dovetail saw. Now just a bit of cleanup around the base of the tenon. A few test fits later, and the tenon fits snugly into the mortise. With all those connecting rails joined, I can test fit the whole thing together and see if it actually rocks. And there's some true happiness right there. Next up are the spindles, and to make the stock for them, I milled up some of the offcuts from my changing table build. I planed these to be a little bit more than a half an inch, and I'll rip square stock out of these. I mount these in the lathe and roughly turn them down to round. I'll also turn the taper on the tailstock end to make the next step easier. Once the spindle is rough turned, I'll take it over to the bench and force it through the half inch hole on my dowel plate. The tapered end makes it easy to get the spindle started. Next I'll cut all the spindles to length at the table saw. I'm going to be using 12 of these per side, and I also made a few extras in case. I'll then take the spindles back to the lathe and mount them in the chuck to be sanded. I'm sanding here with 180 grit. Sanding with the lathe running makes smoothing these out really quick. Once they look even, I'll stop the lathe and hand sand with the grain to remove the cross grain scratches. Now I need to drill the holes in the rails for the spindles. I start by capturing the angle that the holes will need to be drilled at. I use a straight edge to connect the corners of the lower and upper rails and use my bevel gauge to copy the angle. Next I'll lay out the hole locations starting with making a center line down the rail. And next I'll use my dividers to divide up the length so I have 12 evenly spaced holes. I made a cradle to hold the rails at the correct angle for drilling. The 2x material that I used for the base is ripped at the angle that I captured earlier and I added a scrap of melamine to cradle the rail in place. With all the holes drilled I can install the spindles for a test fit. It was a little finicky to get all these spindles and holes lined up but I found working from one end to the other seemed to work best. And here's another preview of the completed project. The last thing I need to add is the mattress support. 
I'm going to mount the cleat to the inside of the lower rail to support the mattress support boards. I start by running a groove in the two lower rails. Next I can make the cleats. Here I'm just rabbiting this piece to leave a tongue that will fit into the groove that I cut into the rails. And then I finesse the fit of the cleat with a shoulder plane. Now it's time for the final glue up. I'm using epoxy for this glue up since I'm going to need a lot of working time to get all these spindles installed. I added glue to all the holes and then drop the spindles into each hole. Then I'll work on getting the spindles into the top rail. Once I have that assembly, I'll glue it into the side assemblies. I'll use four clamps to pull the rails tight and then I'll spend a little time cleaning up the squeeze out with some acetone. Now I can apply the finish. I applied three coats of General Finish's Armor Seal, sanding between each coat with 600 grit sandpaper. Doing only three coats left a nice close to the wood feel. The last thing I made were a pair of anti-rocking shoes from the offcuts of the rockers. I started by cleaning up the bandsaw cuts with my compass plane. To make these slide on and off easily, I need to make them a little bit wider than the rockers. So I glued some thin strips of wood onto the offcuts before also gluing on the side pieces. I cleaned up the extra of the thin stock with a chisel and a card scraper. And I glued on the other side. I trimmed the side pieces and then cut them to length. Bless you! Bless you! So those mattress support boards are just shiplap together and they're set into the area in the middle there on top of those cleats and I secured them just with one screw, one brass screw on each end and that holds them in there really nicely. I made those out of ash. How are you doing? Now we haven't had to use them yet but these anti-rocking shoes work really well. They just slide right underneath each of the rockers there. and then it's really stable and doesn't move at all. So I guess you could make a table out of this with the shoes or something. <laughs> but we haven't had to use these. JR actually likes to be in motion quite a bit, so these haven't been used yet, but that's all right. So that's about it for this build. Thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments about anything I showed today in the build video, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I appreciate those. I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, what we say? <laughs> Happy woodworking. <laughs>